Hey, today I'm going to talk to you guys about uh, the Stack Overflow uh, 2017 developer survey. They, uh, they surveyed 64,000 developers, and we have a bunch of cool statistics about... Uh, they've been doing it since 2011. This is their newest one. And I, I want to do a special thanks to uh, Thomas McGuire, who shared this in our Facebook group, Code Tech and Caffeine. And if you're not a, if you're not part of the group, you should, you should definitely join... The link for it is in the description below, as well as the link for this article will be. Uh, but let's go ahead and just jump over some of the things I thought was pretty uh, pretty cool. I'm going to do a quick rundown of, of some of it. So um, they've been doing this since 2011. 64,000 developers took their uh, survey. L let me... Uh, uh, so uh, one thing that is not too surprising is that 11% of all programmers said they got coding jobs within the first year of learning to code so if you're thinking it's impossible it's not um and then the other uh, another 37 percent said between one to four years so within four years uh you have basically 48 percent of all programmers uh got jobs um uh, or uh or are um were able to get a job somewhere between that period of time now 75% of developers are interested in looking for new roles, which is which is funny uh, because it's such a high um, demand field that I could see how that could be true. And 53% said remote options were a top priority. This kind of surprised me. I thought this was like, oh yeah, remote would be great, blah, blah, blah. Um, you get an idea of where all the developers are. Uh, I wonder if this is a D3 map. I don't know. Um, so... Uh, well, uh, this is another thing I found surprising to a degree. 72% uh, are web developers. What type of developer they fall into? So uh, when I say that there's a high demand for web developers, you can see it not only in the market, but other places as well. You can get an idea of what's going on here. Um, and I've talked about this before. How Of the web developers, what categories do they fall into? Full stack web developers make up 64% and then there's back end 25% and the front end is 12%. This is why I'm saying once you get confident with a front end framework, you really need to move on to a back end technology to really propel yourself into a role to get to where you want to get to. Um, and you'll see right here, years since learning to code. I don't find this as impressive because uh, if you count me, I'm up to probably about right here, four years. But if you count the professional years, I think this is where it gets much more interesting because you see how valuable you really are. So of all the working developers that are, of the 64,000 that answered this, 7.5% or 7.4% haven't even been working a year. 12.9%. Uh, so if you've been working two years, you're 20% of the population roughly. Uh, let's say five years. This is why I say once you're five years, you're kind of a senior developer. What is that? 30, 32%? 40%, about half the population of developers have five years or less uh, professional experience. So once you kind of get that entry level experience, you really do become very valuable. And it, the, the kind of professional coding experience backs that up as well. Um, 20 or more years of experience, 7.5. 7 so those, those are the OGs right there. About 8% are OGs. Another cool thing um, was, no surprise here, 88% of us are male. Um, and uh, when it comes to ethnicity, about 75% are white. And uh, no, no big surprise that uh, about the next closest one is Asian. Just kind of the generic sort of... Uh, although I do think this is... Pro I haven't looked at the previous years, but I would guess that if we would jump back to 2011, that this both these numbers of uh, male and Caucasian... Um, have have actually decreased. I, I would be very surprised if that wasn't the case because there's definitely a big push for that. Uh, disability status. Uh, most most people aren't disabled. I, I don't think this unable to type. That's really impressive to that one percent. And uh, anyone who can kind of fight through it, you know, life's a little bit rougher for them. So God God bless that they get through there. Here's another thing. There's a big there's a big uh, thought that you have to have a degree to be a developer. Not really the case. Only about this is about 50% of the pop between a bachelor's and a master's. Um, I fall into this some some college, no bachelor's degree. Uh, and then, you know, high school as well. Um, so I fall into this about, I guess this is probably about 30%. And this is about 50%. So it's not impossible, guys. Uh, I know not everyone has the option or wants to take out loans and things like that. You get more of a breakdown here. Uh and then it, it goes into more details about breaking down the demogra <coughs> demographic of how many 
what's the ethnicity to the you know it, well, who cares it's roughly the same right how many people are web devs that are white and caucasian and things like that um i'm not too concerned about that now uh that goes into more details here uh it goes into more education i always find uh there's a good section on here about boot camps um let me scroll down to it right here. Oh, it also goes into what were the most popular degrees as well. You'll see by no surprise that um, basically the the top one was computer science or software engineering, computer engineering, computer programming, web development. Basically, I would consider these four kind of the engineering related, computer science related uh, degrees. So what's that make up? Uh, 70, it's about 75% or so. Um, so about 73%, 74%. So about three fourths of people with undergrad degrees did definitely choose to go into a networking, like a hardware or a software, uh, direction. So if that is something that you are doing, um, the general direction, computer science or software engineering, a lot of people ask all the time, is there a big difference? Not really. Uh, you're going to have to learn so much outside of school that you're going to actually consider yourself self-taught by the end of it. And uh, if you have one or the other, it's not going to matter. They're both great. Uh, you get an answer here about people who had their education. How important did they think it was? For me, um, important and very important, that's about 40%. About 40% of people who got a formal education thought that it was great. Um, 30, and this, this part, I actually somewhat important... I think this is just people, I think this kind of falls down in the not very important and important at all. It's just, as someone who's gone and up to their junior year, I can tell you I really didn't learn too much other than how to think like a programmer, which was kind of important, but everything I really learned and became a developer, I taught on my own in JavaScript. Um, so maybe I'm a little biased. Now, other types of education, 90% are self-taught, or 90% consider them self-taught. I wonder if they were able to, they had to be able to select uh okay i see i see so you'll see right here is that 90 percent love to say they're self-taught right uh online courses on job training on job training i wonder if that just means you're learning at work because who doesn't learn at work um coding competitions hackathons boot camps so i bet this number has skyrocketed i bet this was like three percent in 2011 if it's only nine percent now i like this section quite a bit online uh, how develop what what ways developers teach themselves official documentation now they must have got some og guys of the 64,000 because the the official documentation i've been reading looks like shit i'm not a big fan most of the time but i could see how you could say that stack overflow q a by 0.1 tenth of a percent is that not oh uh this is this is so true right here I'm, I'm surprised official, I feel like official documentation is just something nice to say. I don't think that's actually true. Stack Overflow docs as well. Look at that. Friends Network. This is something I do quite quite often. Um, as, well, as well as tutoring and mentoring, which is lower on the list. I think the only reason it's lower on the list is because it costs money. That's really the gist of it. If someone could mentor you or tutor you, I think that's probably the best way you can go. Um, I'm surprised um, there's no videos or anything. Textbook. I didn't realize people still read textbooks. Uh, Bootcamp success. This is kind of cool. You get to see an idea of people who were successful, where they were when they started. Uh, already had a job, started the program, 46%. I didn't know that. That is that is abnormally high. Um, I guess you just want to kind of future-proof yourself. I could see that. Um, got a job as a developer before completing. 10% of people get jobs before completing the boot camps. That's kind of interesting. 12% uh, upon graduating, 6% less than a month, 9% within three months. Uh, I feel like these people right here, the four to a year, or anywhere from four down, I feel like it's probably the individual more than the boot camp. Um, so if you're in that, in that situation, you maybe haven't been able to market yourself quite well, or you haven't been actually looking as much as you should. Um, I do think that there's a job for everybody, especially if you've gone to a boot camp and you have an impressive portfolio, but there are always going to be those people who fall to the bottom. And I feel like this is them right here. Like, like what is, so between four months and all the way down, we'll say four months down. So I'm, 
I'm going to say that you should get a job within three months of graduating on average. Four, was that, seven, ten, eighteen percent? Eighteen percent of the people uh, did not get a job from boot camp uh, before three months. That, that seems pretty good. Eighteen percent, more or less. Uh, program as a hobby? Uh, this is interesting because... I don't contribute to open source projects. Only 6% of us do. I don't feel too bad knowing it's only 6%. But I guess I program as a hobby if you count my channel. But I consider it more of a, a second job. What kind of learning do developers recommend? Online courses are great. Um, conferences, meetups, boot camps. Uh, I don't recommend open source. Although it's not a bad idea. I just don't typically think people have the time. I think it's kind of hard. Um... This is a great thing right here. Get a job as QA tester. If you really want an easy way of getting your foot in the door, part of the, one of the best ways is through QA. That's really one of the entry level roles. So I'm glad to see that's on here. Um, none of these, I like 2.6% for said, hey man, these are stupid. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to say videos fall into online courses because that's usually what most of it is. No love for, uh, no love for uh, YouTube though. Programming language. This uh, this one was the another great uh, thing uh, to back up a lot of what I've been saying and what I've been reading is JavaScript. Look how many people use JavaScript. A lot of what, but it, to be shown, right? 74% of the people who are uh, web developers. But you can see it's very important. TypeScript, see this falls into JavaScript as far as I'm, I'm concerned. Uh, they should just throw that all in one. TypeScript's just more advanced JavaScript at the end of the day. Um, Haskell. Whew. We're going back. Um, frameworks, libraries, other technologies. Angular JS. Wow, I'm surprised to see that it is two point. What is that? Two point two five times the size of React. This shows you how important Node is. I've been stressing this for a while as well. I just started learning Node. If you want to get your foot in the door, Angular and Re or React and Node slash Express, right? Um, those are the things that you're really going to be needing in terms of frameworks and libraries for web development. And you can see it right here between just how much it's being used by these 64,000 developers. I've never heard of this. I've never heard of Hadoop, Zomarin. I have heard of Firebase and Cord Cordova, although I haven't used them yet. Um, databases, MySQL. I use MySQL at my work. Most of these are going to be pretty similar. and let, Most relational databases are going to be similar. You're going to have to learn a little bit of the ins and the outs. I don't think it's too important unless you're uh, becoming a, a uh, data administrator. But you can also see MongoDB. This is a NoSQL. I haven't used this one before. This is, so there's, there's relational databases and there's uh, NoSQL databases, which kind of store things as documents and like JSON objects, right? And I just started learning that recently. And my, those are really coming up right now. So it's pre pretty exciting. <coughs> um, you can see what platforms. 41% of people use um, Windows. 32% uh, Linux. Uh, Mac. All the way down. Languages over time. So it's been increasing for 2013. 50, it's, JavaScript's been going up. Uh, a lot of these. What has been going down? Ruby's been going down. Java's been going down. C Sharp's been going down. C, PHP. So, of all these, Python and JavaScript and Node are kind of the ones that you need to be working on. Uh, in my in my opinion, based off the stats, I, and I really do believe seeing what people are using really shows you what's being used in the workplace. Most loved slash dreaded and wanted languages. All right, so loved is Rust, huh? Uh, TypeScript is loved. Maybe I really need to dive into. JavaScript is loved. All right, what's dreaded? Visual Basic. I I don't know. I haven't I haven't worked with Visual Basic. What's wanted? Python is the most wanted, and JavaScript. All right. Um. Let's see. Top pain technologies, technologies and occupations. Web developer, JavaScript. I think all these are going to be pretty similar. We're going to jump through a little bit. Top pain technologies. This is one of the ones that people ask all the time about. Like what is, uh, and we're gonna we'll do worldwide, just so you can see. Where's JavaScript? JavaScript's fifty thousand dollars worldwide. So as a JavaScript developer, because uh, most of you are web developers, are trying to be from. If you're watching my channel most of the time, uh, you're worth about fifty grand worldwide. Uh, sounds pretty good. Uh, now, 
Ruby is about 60. Scala. Now, let's go look at US. JavaScript, uh, about 90 grand worldwide is what you, or er, in the US. So, uh, this is, uh, you know, taking senior and mid and junior. I make less than that, uh, but I'm in my first year coding. And I'm not too far off from that. I'm about, uh, oh, I probably shouldn't say. But uh, this this number, I should say, is achievable in two to three years, I would say. Um, so it's not unrealistic in, in any manner. Uh, correlated technologies. Inter oh, I like this. Let's see here. Where is my JavaScript? So you can kind of see who uses what with what. PHP Storm with PHP, of course, WordPress, MySQL, SQL. So JavaScript connects to Angular, which connects Node, React, MongoDB, Kodrop, TypeScript, and you kind of see how it can, see how JavaScript is very influential, like this whole sort of stack, almost like stacks. Um, nice. Uh, company type, about 70% uh, developers are fully employed. I'm going to, I'm going to leave the rest of this for you. Um, but a very interesting article. Again, uh, if you like articles like this and you like to stay on top of these things and it helps you stay motivated, I know it keeps me motivated to kind of, and I find it all interesting, right? Um, cause yes, I am a programmer and no, I don't care about your app ideas. No, <laughs> uh, but I, I really like this stuff. Pretty interesting article. Um, it's cool to see that uh, what languages are headed on the way up if uh, it's being more used and which ones are headed down and kind of really show you the marketplace, I think. Um, I really enjoyed reading it. It'll be in the description. Don't forget to join our Facebook group, Code Tech and Caffeine. Link is also in the description. If you want to support me, you can at patreon.com slash codingtutorials360. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. And if you have a good article or you have a question you want answered, leave it in the comments below or share it on the Facebook group and maybe I can share it with everybody else so we can all keep getting better. Thanks for watching guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you're interested in coding bootcamp, check out devmountain.com where housing is included in your price of tuition. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share and support me on Patreon. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.